Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Koboman. In this video I will show you how to upgrade or replace parts on HP 800 G1 or G2 small form factor desktop PC. In this video I will show you how to specifically go through all of it real quick. If you're interested in this type of desktop, there will be in a description box below. This computer is really good for all kinds of multitasking, things that you might want to do with the computer, including gaming. This thing has an i5-6500 CPU, which is awesome. Looking at it this way, this is the front of it, and here's the back of it, right? In order to open this lid, you simply pull on this lever, and you just lift up, and then way you can just take it out like this and just put it aside. By the way, in case you have a bent case, sometimes these are hard to remove, but at least to give you an idea on how this mechanism works in case it gets stuck, right? So it moves back and forth in case you have a bent case, sometimes these don't come off as easily. So a couple of main things that people usually go for when it comes to replacing or upgrading on their computer is the hard drive. So we have easy access to the hard drive and it's really simple to replace. Here's our CD-ROM and it's actually slightly different than replacing these. Let me show you how this mechanism works. So in order to remove this drive, as you can see, there are little tabs that are holding the hard drive in place and I'll show you exactly how that looks like once I remove it. It's very simple. Here is actually a lever. So you have to pull on it, as you can see here, and I'll show you a better angle. If this is not in the proper position you like, you can actually lift on this, like this, like so. Once you lift this, you can actually have good access to what you see. So if you push on this, you see how it's actually releasing the hard drive there. That way you can properly slide it out. So let me push this back here a little bit so you guys can see, right? So once I'm pulling on this, and if I just slide forward, right? Now I can slide forward, otherwise I wouldn't be able to, you see that? So now I can just slide forward towards myself and then a lift up, right? I can release this because it's no longer holding it. And if I lift up, and always be careful whenever you remove anything, whether it's a hard drive or just any type of PC component. So you lift it up like so, and then here it's self-explanatory, you just unplug these and you replace your hard drive and then you're done with that. And then it's in just reverse order. Always take your time, make sure that your cables are not rubbing against anything before you place it back in. Okay. And then slide it back that way, right? And now you're done with hard drive. So whether you want to put a solid state in there or just add an extra one, we can also do that here. So let's say you want to keep this. Here's space for our solid state drive. We can put another solid state drive in here and uh, it's you have extra connector here. And in order to connect so this is our power, we're just gonna need this extra serial connector which actually connects there. So with your new hard drive, you'll probably get one of these cables. You just plug it in here. And then once you put your solid state drive in there, you can simply connect it like that, pull everything back down. Um, additionally, let me just move this cable out of the way. Okay. Additionally, if you want to install a third hard drive, you can certainly do so here, right? Here's another space for uh, you know, regular uh, three and a half inch drive like this one here, or you can even attach, uh, you know, solid state if you really wanted to, right? You just have to get a little bit creative, but either way, you do have extra power connector, and then of course, you can put a solid state drive. The only one, the one thing to keep in mind is that you do only have three SATA connectors, so it could be up to three drives, but that means if you want three hard drives, right? If you want three hard drives, you're going to have to disconnect our CD-ROM, so a lot of people don't need to use the CD-ROM so you can disconnect it and just use that you know use that uh, connector instead of uh, instead of the CD-ROM so if you want to remove the CD-ROM you actually press down on this green tab and it actually lets it loose and I want to press it now because it's going to fall through and it's not going to fall where I want it you're actually supposed to have this all the way down because once we press this the green button here it slides out that way so if I press it the drive comes out like so, right? It's very self exploded then you push it back, make sure it clips back in, right? Okay, now we're done with that. So now we know how to upgrade our solid state drive. Now, again, a lot of times people don't even know that you can actually do this, because it's actually pretty tough in there, but there's no button or anything, but obviously you can remove this like so. So now let's have a look at our memory. Here you can actually install up to, I believe, 64-bit because this CPU is i5, um, uh, 6500, 
and that's a new architecture I believe it supports up to 64 gigabytes anyways these are uh, these are the memory slots that you can use you simply put them in like so right we have plenty of space it's dual channel what it appears to be as well and since I'm playing around with this cable here this is our power supply cable so let's have a look how to replace the power supply in case it goes out or you know something like that so you have actually three cables that come from the power supply unit. Actually, I should say three bundles, right? But it's three plugs, one here, one there, and one here. So you would basically unplug those first. Let me see if you get in a good angle of this. Here, what I'll, this is what I'll do here, right quick. All right, give you a little bit another angle there. There's our other connector. And if you want the easier access to that, you can simply remove this air guide once you remove the wire from this part here right and that just clips here really easy simple to remove that way you get a little bit more extra room to work on this right and in order to do this you just press on the little tab here you see how it actually squeezes in right there you just squeeze it like so right so we got one cable disconnected here's our second one for the power supply so we got P1, P2, and P3, right? This is P1, P2, and P3. Same thing, you really can't mess these up, right? So now that you're done, you just have to release this part that's holding these cables. Okay, we're almost done here. And then in order to actually remove the power supply, there are a few screws back here. And let me show you. There are four screws, or three, I'm sorry, three screws there. Once you do that, you just press this button here, right here, and then you can just take out the power supply. After that, it's very self-explanatory. Okay? So if for some reason you need to replace the heat sink or you want to replace your uh, CPU, you just need a flathead screwdriver like this. I hope it focuses in for you guys. And then you simply use this and then you unscrew it counterclockwise and this will pop out this will pop out and then you can remove the the uh, heat sink I'm not going to do it here because I don't want to have to replace the thermal paste that's underneath but it's very simple you just do that and you unplug your fan which is right there and then you just pull this hole out and that that's how that works right the most important thing is here is to actually upgrade a video card this is what most folks want to do when it comes to their new computers and of course we can look at that this way we a couple of different slots that we want to look at. These are all PCI Express slots. These are times one, these small ones. This black one is times 16. This one is times four, right? So here's the thing. You have to make sure you have a low profile video card in order to in, use it in this. And obviously you want to use 16 times. However, if you do have to use four times, you will lose some performance, but not a huge amount, right? So if you have to use because of the shape of the video card, or something like that then you can use four times if you really wanted to still get a huge boost but however you want to try to aim for this 16 times and for that you're going to need a video card that's a small profile like so right and you simply insert it in here and then you just drop it in whenever you're ready um, for this I will actually make a separate video for the video card so if you're here just for the video card I just wait for the end of this video I will post a link at the end of it as a thumbnail so you make sure you click it also in the description box below and if you're interested in this specific PC there will be a link in the description box below as well alright guys thank you so much for watching I hope you like this video share with friends leave a like leave a comment I'll be glad to help you with any questions that you may have so do not hesitate to ask me anything I will certainly help you out alright guys have a good one bye bye